Hey everyone, welcome to another video review. This is the Kotobukiya Basojo series Transformers Megatron. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put her off to the side because we're gonna look at this box real quick because, uh, yeah, it's a fairly good sized box. You got, of course, the Shoujo statue, Megatron's picture there, and the Decepticon leader, and the Shoujo series logo, and the big old window, and the Transformers logo is way up here. It's a Karatomi licensing and whatnot, and Kotobuki and stylized by Shunya Yamashita. And up on the top, you have another window, and Decepticon symbol, and Transformers, and all that stuff. And on the side here, you have a nice, uh, well, purple scale, I guess, uh, picture of Megatron's um, human form. On the back, or the so this side you have, well, girl Megatron there and, well, well, Transformers Megatron looking very angry, angry, because I don't think Megatron would actually enjoy being turned into a human. And uh, on the bottom you have a whole bunch of copyrights and warnings and all that stuff. And yeah, not for anyone under ages 15. And on the back, of course, you have a couple product shots and a little blurb for, you know, a little blurb about uh, stuff. And uh, yeah. There's an Optimus as well, and they also specifically call out a uh, Mumblebee coming. So, yep. That's the box. And also comes this little piece of paper, which uh, tells you how to assemble the fusion cannon, because it does come in separate pieces outside of the box, and it's pretty easy, though. It just tells you, hey, it's keyed, so uh, pay attention. It's not difficult, because it comes in uh, multiple pieces. Anyway, yep, Megatron. Uh, the, yes, the next in the Mishojo series. Uh, she, you can see there, she is much more militaristic, which makes sense considering who Megatron is. Yeah, you get the whole uh, thing there with the coat and the military style stuff and some Megatron details. Um, getting it close real quick, you can see the hair with the bob cut, which kind of emulates the haircut, and I guess the hat kind of emulates the helmet as well. The bob haircut which emulates the helmet. That's what I meant to say. You can also see the fusion cannon, which is very much well styled after Megatron's fusion cannon, except, well, you got the pistol grip, which is modeled after the original G1 gun, so that's kind of cool. You got all that stuff. You got, yeah, you can see the, um, yeah, very, this very, uh, very nice, uh, pearlescent finish pretty much on the, uh, coat. It's got this, like, it's not really gray. It's kind of at this, it's kind of gray, but with more of a purple sheen to it. It's kind of, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but yeah, you got these little silver bits too. You got the red on the pockets, little black, uh, end sleeve stuff. Um, all this one also has some, uh, little tassels on the shoulder. Yeah, we've got the Decepticon symbol on the tie. you got more of the button-ups and a little bit of the, uh, I guess, the belly buttons that Megatron usually has as, as part of the belt and the black skirt, black gloves. Yeah, and, of course, yeah, uh, stockings and high heels and the Decepticon symbol as the base. And there you go. Yeah, it flares out in the back and stuff, too. So, uh, yep, that's your statue. It's pretty cool looking. Um, you also got the red eyes as well. She always, yeah, she looks like she is not happy to see you, which makes sense because it is indeed Megatron. The uh, cannon, there is, and, and empty, the barrel is actually empty. Um, nothing in there. There's no lights or anything, if you're wondering. But yeah, just, you can see, it just comes off and there's a little notch here and there's a little thing there and just, that's just makes it real simple. Because I guess for the sake of uh, the box, making sure it's not too uh, much. So there you go. It's a... Uh, Almost like she's a mixed military dictator. All he's really missing is like a bajillion fake medals on the coat or something. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's very military dictator, which again, line up with Megatron. It makes sense there. So um, there you go on that. Pretty good looking actually overall. I just really like the finish on this coat. Honestly, it's really nice looking. The only thing is I'd be very uh, careful about this. This, this snags on something. Let's like, say you're like moving. I'd be really careful because I'm not sure that's a kind of a bendable plastic, but that snags and you pull wrong, I expect that could uh, cause some serious damage. So I'd be really careful about that. But anyway, some comparisons. Yeah, just like before, we're going to go, well, here's uh, Siege Megatron, just to give you an idea on that front, that the current, uh, you know, main line. And yeah, of course, uh, MP36 Megatron, who's a bit taller. So again, scale is not really a thing here because, well, human and all that stuff, but hey, you got an idea, you know, the kind of the masterpiece, mainline, the shoujo. There you go. You, know, you can see also the color difference. You know, this is more of a just tradition, just a gray, metallic gray, but you, know, you got that purplish, pearlescent gray purple thing. So you got all that when it comes to Megatron. Makes me wonder if they're going to do a G2 version. <laughs> That'd be wild. A G2 version of this, all green and purple. I wonder how that, how that would look. And of course, other comparison, because, well, God, I mean, at this point, and of course, 
Optimus. You can see there, yeah, Optimus Prime, of course, with the face mask, because that's how I prefer. Yep. Kind of weird, too, because it's kind of interesting. Two very different interpretations of the characters. You got Optimus here. It kind of looks like, you know, kind of a, more of a normal girl, except kind of with weird uh, car accessories attached to her. And, well, very military dictator girl type of thing. So very different dynamics here, but that kind of makes sense for the character. So I don't know. Because, I mean, that was the whole thing about Optimus. He's just kind of some guy who just goes told, hey, you're going to lead the Autobots now. <laughs> so, yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense for the Bishojo's version to be just some girl, you know? So, yeah, that's um, Bishojo Megatron. Pretty good looking. $150, though. So, yeah, again, it's a whole spiel. If you don't like you know, non-transforming Transformers, if you don't like statues... If you don't like the concept in general, this is not going to be for you. But if you see it and you like it and the $150 sounds like a good price, because that's how much it is for this. It doesn't transform or move or anything, but it's $150 and it's pretty sturdy. It feels pretty sturdy. Looks nice. I don't see anything really wrong with the paint so uh, or any of that. So, uh, and again, really nice finish on the coat in particular. Um, if you think this that's worth it, then yeah, go ahead and pick one up. You can well, buy it pretty much anywhere. I mean... Pretty much any of the Japanese usual places you can buy Transformers, you could probably buy this. Well, not offer one, but BBTS, uh, Entertainment Earth, Ami Ami, Amazon Japan, so on and so on. Whatever. Pretty much a lot of the places you can buy Transformers, you can buy this if you like. If you think that 150 is agreeable, then there you go. You get what you see. So that's it for this uh, video. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Twitter. I'm at Nemesis Prime One. Check out my co-host, co-host.org slash Nemesis Dash Prime. And check out my Patreon on my coffee. And I shall see you next time with another video review.